Hello, I'm Suranjana Gupta and I'm with the Vairo Commission. The Vairo Commission is a global movement that focuses on empowering women living in poor and marginalized communities in order to enable them to build resilient, socially and economically just, equitable, sustainable communities. I'm going to explain a little bit about our Community Resilience Fund that has been resourcing grassroots women's organizations to drive local resilience in response to local community priorities. In the past five years, the Community Resilience Fund has been given to 22 organizations across 18 countries in Asia, Africa, and Latin America benefiting at least 15,000 women. We wanted to counter the existing approach of simply training communities to map risks and vulnerabilities and preparing them for emergency response. We thought there was much more to building community resilience than that. Local women's groups are using the funds to map risks and vulnerabilities but embedded in the process of mapping these risks is a process by which women begin to mobilize their communities and build consensus around the priorities for action. The flexibility of the funds allows women to invest it in local priorities that range from building more resilient food and farming systems to upgrading local infrastructure. Women's groups have been using the fund to test and experiment with and scale up a range of different practices. But the Community Resilience Fund is more than just a mechanism that funds technical solutions to adaptation and resilience. What it does is it supports a range of other activities that place these technical solutions inside a larger global movement for social change. So it allows groups to invest in learning in building and expanding their leadership. It allows groups to build relationships with other groups to amplify their impacts. And it allows groups to invest in building relationships with government institutions who ultimately support them to scale up their activities. So ultimately the Community Resilience Fund is not only supporting grassroots driven resilience practices, it's also supporting grassroots women to reconfigure their social and political relationships with other actors. And I'll give you some examples of this. First, the investment in grassroots women's learning on practical solutions has resulted in a network of community leaders and experts. And increasingly, we see government institutions, particularly local government institutions, endorsing and often remunerating this expertise to collaborate with women's groups in order to implement government programs more effectively. Secondly, women's groups have been managing and taking decisions on the Community Resilience Fund and have created their own governance structures to ensure that the funds are used in a transparent and accountable way. And this is key 
to creating a track record for these women's groups so that they can leverage more resources, more institutional resources and attract partners in order to scale up their work. Thirdly, it's important to note that women's groups spend a significant proportion of the Community Resilience Fund in engaging and collaborating with local government and other institutions. In investing in this kind of grassroots learning and partnerships, the fund is essentially providing patient capital because these kinds of investments require many iterations of learning, of experimenting, of collaboration in order to arrive at a place in which institutions are prepared to collaborate, co-design, co-create and share resources and power with grassroots women. So what do we need to take the Community Resilience Fund to the next stage of development and scale up the work that grassroots women are doing to build more resilient communities? There's no question that we need more money to be invested in locally-led adaptation and resilience. But alongside bigger volumes of money, we need institutions that finance resilience and adaptation to acknowledge and recognize the social movements who are essentially aggregators of locally-led action. We need them to work together with our networks to build trusted relationships and robust partnerships which allow us to co-design and develop ways in which finance can be delivered to drive resilience from the ground up. We need to revisit how risk and failure are perceived and defined so that we see these as part of learning and innovation and we develop longer time frames that ensure that the learning that occurs from failure can be used to develop more robust solutions. And finally, we need mechanisms that enhance our accountability and ask that financial institutions and policy institutions are accountable to the local communities where we must deliver the results and impacts of our investments. Thank you.